Welcome Mechanics and Materials students. In this demo problem we're going to examine shear strain uh, of a material that's being or a body that's where one point is being moved in a definitive direction. Uh, so we start out with a triangle uh, BAC defined by just the black lines not the blue lines and so we basically have a, a three four five right triangle where uh, the angle at point A is, is a 90 degree angle. And so we displace point A, uh, we're going to let's draw us a coordinate direction here. A gets displaced 0 0.008 inches in the negative x direction to its new position. It does not move in the y direction. So it retains the same position versus this, this base up here. And this 5 inch dimension stays the same. So basically what we get is a, is a new side of the triangle that's going to be a little bit longer than 3 inches. And then we're going to get a new side of the triangle here that's going to be a little bit shorter than the original 4 inches. And so the question is, what is the average shear strain at point A? And this is pretty convenient because we start out with a 90 degree angle. So it, our, original, we, our original angle is 2 pi. So basically, if we can find out what this new angle here is, our, our new, we'll call it beta, uh, we can just subtract that from 90 degrees, convert to, to radians, 2 pi, and we will have our shear strain. It's also pretty clear that its beta is very likely to be less than 90 degrees. You can almost tell that by eyeballing it. So the real trick becomes just simple geometry in finding, finding beta as, as a function of our original dimensions and of our, of our displacement of this one point. So for that, we end up relying on the law of sines and also the fact that this dimension here remains the same. So we're going to call this, this y dimension, we'll call it h. And so we're going to start by trying to find what this angle, this new angle here is. Originally, it was, was basically our, our angle BCA was 53.1 degrees, um, whatever is appropriate for uh, the angle opposite of our 4 inches and our 3, 4, 5 right triangle. But now it's going to become somewhat less. So the nice thing is our H on our original 3, 4, 5 right triangle is, is basically the same H that we have it is the same H that we have in our new triangle, except instead of, um, instead of this original distance, we have, we'll call it, we'll call it X. We now have X plus our displacement of our, of our A vertex that just shifted over. So that's really the key to solving uh, for this new angle beta is basically expressing the new bases of these two triangles. And from that, we're going to basically back out these new angles and then subtract them from, add them together and subtract them from 180 degrees to get beta. So if we will define this as alpha and call that um, phi. <laughs> So phi plus alpha uh, plus beta equals 180 degrees. So we'll end up relying on that. So basically, we need to get x that corresponded with um, basically with a portion of the base of our, of our original pre-deformation triangle. So for that, we can just kind of, we can kind of parse that out. We can look at our at our original triangle where we had three inches on one side, which is basically going to be the hypotenuse of our new triangle. 
we have X and H and we know that this angle was originally 53 point about 13 let's recalculate it so it would be our original angle on our 3 4 5 right triangle would have been 4 enter 3 divide arctangent yeah just about 53.13 degrees okay so h is going to be basically 3 inches times sine of 53.13 degrees sine 3 times so h is going to be 2.4 and x will just be 3 inches times cosine of 53.13 degrees cosine 3 times so we have 1.8 okay so we go from a triangle whose base is 1.8 on in this direction one base to 1.8 plus 0 0.008 so now we have vertex C going to A we've still got 2.4 inches on this side and now we have 1.8 plus 1.8 delta A so that's 1.8 plus 0 0.008 make sure I have this right so we have 1.8 zero eight inches on that side we know that's a right angle so we can basically find our our angle alpha in our new triangle is going to be a tan of 2.4 divided by 1.808 so it's going to be a little bit a little bit smaller than it was before so 2.4 enter 1.808 divide a tan so we now have alpha is 53.008 degrees so that's not a big change but as uh, we've stated in earlier lectures these strains tend to be very small and that will allow us to make some simplifying assumptions in future problems okay so we can do the same over here We'll switch to another color. Maybe go to purple over here. So now we're going to look at vertex B and we're going to look at our kind of our new triangle. We still have one dimension of 2.4 inches. And originally we had a dimension of 5 inches minus x now we're going to have smaller dimensions so we'll have 5 inches minus x minus delta a so this side will basically be 5 inches minus 1.808 so we get 3.192 inches so again we can define our angle phi in our new triangle as a tan of 2.4 divided by 3.192 arctangent so we get a phi of about 36 point nine three eight seven three point zero zero eight plus so 
So if we add phi and alpha, we end up getting about 89. Point nine five. Hmm. Let's go to a few more decimal places there. I'm going to take a pause and just check my math really quick. Okay, back from our pause, just making sure that hadn't made a math boo-boo. So again, picking up from uh, where we left off, we have phi, which is our new angle at vertex B, plus alpha, which is our, our new angle at vertex C. We combine those, so we get 36.9387. 36.9387. Having a finger moment on our calculator, plus 53.008, and so we get something less than 90, and that was what threw me. Uh, just eyeballing it, it seemed like we would have ended up with a positive shear strain, or the angle at the vertex A kind of looked like it was getting smaller, so it just goes to show, always good to calculate, but as it turned out, when we subtract um, our theta plus alpha, from 180, we're going to get a, a beta, which is our new angle at A, of a little over 90. In fact, we get 90.0533 degrees. So our change, our shear strain at A, is going to be defined as pi over 2, which is our original angle at A, minus beta in radians. So we can just do, do the sum in, in degrees and then convert to radians. So we have the 90.0533, and we're going to subtract 90, 90 minus, and so we get a 0. 0533 degrees is 90 degrees minus beta. And so we convert that to radians, 180 divide, 3.14159 times. And we get something in and around 9.3 times 10 to the minus 4 strain unitless, and so we could express this as about 930 micro strain. Now, since the angle got bigger, um, basically beta was larger, we actually, that was actually a negative number, we actually having a, a negative there because we have 90 minus beta, beta is bigger than 90, so this is, this should have a negative sign. So we actually have we can say up here, use green for a final value. Just write it at the top here. So our final value for engineering shear strain at A is going to be equal negative 930 micro strain. So, um, our problem was simplified a little bit because we started out with an angle that was, was 90 degrees and that, that just literally fits into the, the formal definition of, of engineering shear strain and then the trick became uh, just simply walking through the geometry of the shift in the triangle and the key there was, was observing the fact that this displacement of, of point A, which is what caused all the shear strain, um, was only uh, in the x direction, and so our our distance uh, along this this basically this perpendicular uh, was preserved, and so then it was just a couple of right triangles. 
Um, something to remember on these, uh, this, is, this is a place where we can really um, be su subject to a, a bit of round off error. If you look up this answer in the Vabel textbook, this is, this is actually uh, one of the problems that has an answer in the back of the book out of chapter two. I believe uh, Vabel may have gotten uh, something like negative 929 microstrain. So there's obviously a bit of round off error going on. He probably retained more or less, um, fewer or greater number of, of decimal places. Um, so when we're talking about these small strains, it's probably a good idea to, to carry a lot of decimal places in your calculator. I'm not going to carry that many through when I'm writing them. It's just too cumbersome. But um, if you're working with a calculator or a spreadsheet that can store numbers, um, just you know, basically order your calculations as much as possible so that you're not re-entering any numbers. Uh, this is one of those cases where um, we're carrying as many decimal places through the calculation and then rounding at the end um, is going to be important given the fact that the quantities we're looking at are, are pretty much excuse me, by definition going to be small in many cases simply to stay within the elastic realm of, of a lot of the materials we'll work with. So that is it for this problem and um, the last in this small demo set on, on shear strain.